What's going on in Afghanistan? Who exactly are the Taliban and how did they take over so rapidly? Let's quickly break it down. Right now, the capital of Afghanistan, Kabul, is in chaos. People are desperately trying to flee the country. There are traffic jams as people race to get to the airport, and we've even seen people trying to hold on to the outside of planes as they're about to take off. So, why is all of this happening? The Afghan government has just fallen, the president has fled the country, and a group known as the Taliban has taken over. The Taliban, which translates to the students, are extremist Islamist militants. One of their primary goals is to bring their strict interpretation of religious law to Afghanistan, and many worry this will lead to harsh restrictions on the lives of Afghans. While the Taliban didn't officially form until 1994, experts say the group had its origins in the Mujahideen, fundamentalist Islamic guerrilla fighters who were actually backed by the United States as they fought Soviet forces in Afghanistan in the 70s and 80s. Afghanistan has basically been in a non-stop state of war since the 1970s. During a period of civil war in the 1990s, a group known as the Taliban, made up of many former Mujahideen fighters, started to seize territory. By 1996, the Taliban were the dominant force in Afghanistan. However, a small part of the country remained outside of the Taliban's control, and most of the international community refused to recognise the Taliban as a legitimate government. The Taliban led a brutal regime that killed political opponents, allied with terrorist groups, oppressed women, destroyed important cultural sites, and engaged in violent public punishments. Then, in 2001, came the September 11 attacks in the United States. The US believed those responsible for the attacks were being sheltered by the Taliban in Afghanistan. So it sent in troops, along with Australia and other allies. The Taliban were quickly toppled, but the group didn't disappear. They fled to remote parts of the country and continued to wage guerrilla warfare against the United States and its allies. The Taliban was able to keep control of some remote areas, as well as some support from the Afghan population. In the decades that followed, trillions of dollars were spent by the US and its allies, not only fighting the Taliban, but training the Afghan military, rebuilding parts of the country, and trying to establish democracy. Thousands of US troops have died, along with tens of thousands of Afghan soldiers and civilians. Support for US involvement has been gradually declining in the states, with some, including President Biden himself, labeling the conflict as the forever war. I cannot and will not ask our troops to fight on endlessly in another, in another country's civil war. More than 40 Australian Defence Force personnel have also been killed, and there are concerns for the welfare of many of the returned soldiers, who may feel that all the gains they made during the war have been reversed. The United States first announced that it would be pulling out of Afghanistan in April 2021. What followed was expected by some, but few expected it to happen as quickly as it did. It was hoped that the Afghan government and security forces would be able to defend themselves, but many members of the Afghan army, which was largely paid for and equipped by the US, simply fled and escaped to neighbouring countries. Taliban fighters quickly swept across the country, seizing city after city without facing much resistance. After taking Kabul, the Taliban has claimed control of most of the country and the existing government of Afghanistan has all but collapsed. President Biden has been criticised for pulling out the US troops, with some saying it happened too quickly and allowed the Taliban to take over. Yes, we are saved, US should leave the country, but why this way? At least we should give it some time. Biden has dismissed this argument, saying that the recent events have actually reinforced his decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. If you're wondering what happens next, experts aren't quite sure either. The Taliban say they will hold talks to create an open, inclusive Islamic government. Government officials will be activated soon, and all employees, including women, will return to work and work in areas permitted by Sharia law. However, many are worried we'll see a return of some oppressive policies. We are receiving chilling reports of severe restrictions on human rights throughout the country. And I am particularly concerned by accounts of mounting human rights violations against the women and girls of Afghanistan who fear a return to the darkest days. Under the first period of Taliban rule, women weren't allowed to leave the home without a man and were required to be clad head to toe in a burqa. Women were also not allowed to work, and girls weren't allowed to pursue an education. Non-Islamic music and television was banned, 
and corporal punishments like cutting off thieves' hands and public beatings were in place. Today, shop fronts in Kabul featuring women are being painted over. There are reports of fewer women being seen outside. I don't see, uh, see uh, any uh, girls in the in, uh, street. They are afraid, they are scared from the uh, Taliban. And there are fears that women who have risen to positions of power or advocated for women's rights will be punished. People feel absolutely betrayed, helpless, disappointed and angry. One scenario is this, they don't prevent us from going to school, attending school, universities and uh, having a job, but they will just set up some limitation for us. The, the second scenario is that they totally removed women from the society. Australia has joined with more than 60 countries calling for foreign officials and Afghans alike to be granted safe passage out of the country if they wish to leave. While the future of those left behind in Afghanistan is unclear, one thing is certain. The situation in Afghanistan is far from over. Thanks again for watching. If you want to see other explainer videos like this, make sure to check out the International Politics playlist on our homepage. It covers everything from the recent civil war in Ethiopia to the uprising in Myanmar and the future of North Korea.